I don't know if any of you have noticed, but the prophet Jeremiah has been put through the absolute ringer at this point, and all because he continued proclaiming the words that God gave him to share. In chapter 38, we continue to see more of those who would conspire against Jeremiah, claiming him to be a traitor to the nation, a deflector to the Chaldeans, and even a deflator to the morale of the armies of Judah. All of this because those in power didn't want to listen to what God has declared to be their fates due to their own sin and backslidden nature. After numerous ten years of imprisonment, Jeremiah finds himself being lowered into a deep, dark pit of muck and mire that threatens to completely consume him. This is pretty dark stuff here, and it reminds me of Daniel, another prophet from the next book down the line, being condemned to a den of lions because of his unrelenting worship of God that aggravated a similar group of officials who were looking for a reason to get rid of him. Now, as we've been doing throughout the study of this book, let's take another step back and put Jeremiah's experience in proper perspective to ours today. We might find ourselves, similarly to Jeremiah, engulfed in a culture and society that doesn't want anything to do with God or His Word. We might also find ourselves in situations where being bold about our beliefs in Jesus might put us in a tough spot with a world that is drowning in sin. It is our responsibility to stay true to our mission of proclaiming the truth of the gospel with our words and our conduct. Something that I admire about the prophet Jeremiah is that he was clearly a man who felt incredible emotion within himself on the regular. As someone who also experiences great emotion throughout my daily life, I am inspired by Jeremiah. He's known as the weeping prophet because of how much he poured his own soul out in tears over the sinful state of Israel. But let's notice here, especially in chapter 38, that he is not a complaining prophet. Jeremiah had every right from a human perspective to complain to God about how he was being treated. I honestly wouldn't blame him if he felt the profound need to complain. I know I would, and I'm sure you would too. So often, his journey has been a matter of life and death, but we see how God faithfully delivers Jeremiah every time. He is saved from the pit by a eunuch from the king's house who is not happy with how Jeremiah was being treated. Similarly to the story of Daniel in the lion's den again, and how God shut the mouths of the lions so Daniel's life could be saved. Now here's the big kicker. Jeremiah is now brought to King Zedekiah, the same king who has not been listening to God's warning all this time. The same king who was spineless enough to let the princes of his court throw Jeremiah into the muddy pit. The same king who allowed Abed-Melech, the eunuch, to take a band of men to save Jeremiah from the same muddy pit, who now wants to know what God has told Jeremiah about what the king should do. Jeremiah, understandably, has a moment of humanity where he tells the king in verse 15 that he's nervous about disclosing what God wants him to say because the king might literally either put Jeremiah to death or just not listen at all. However, the king assures Jeremiah that he will listen and keep his life safe from those who would want him dead. And with a boldness that can only come from the Lord, Jeremiah tells the king what God says will happen based on the decision Zedekiah makes regarding the armies that surround the land. Here's my favorite part. When the king complains to Jeremiah that he's worried about defectors in Judah turning the king into their enemies for following God's direction, Jeremiah again boldly pleads with him in verse 20 saying, They shall not deliver you. Please obey the voice of the Lord which I speak to you. So it shall be well with you and your soul shall live. I think that is the perfect lesson for both sides of the situation here. If we are either feeling persecuted or, or challenged with our beliefs, or we are recognized that we have given ourselves over to sin, the truth of the matter is to simply obey the voice of the Lord, and our souls will live through His mercy and goodness. Take that with you today, because just as God was with Jeremiah and delivered him from a host of tough situations, so he will do with you if you simply obey his callings and commands.